everybody, this is Finch, and this is episode two of the Dota Clinic. Today we're going to be looking at motivation. Motivation is my personal favorite topic, and so I hope you guys enjoy it. I tried to cut it down as much as possible. Uh, I could talk for days about motivation and kind of what motivates people to do various things in life, uh, animals, whatever it may be. I find motivation to be absolutely fascinating. Because if you just do a Google search for theory of motivation, you'll find a thousand different theories, all of which, you know, ranging from things that make sense to things that are really wacky and out there. Um, but most of the time, you can kind of find a good chunk of motivation theories, maybe like 15 or 20, that all have totally relevant places and things that you can look at and you read and you go, you know what, that makes sense. I understand that. I understand how I can apply that to my life and, you know, that makes makes my girlfriend make sense to me or makes my wife make sense to me now. But whatever it may be, motivation is something that each person is going to approach it differently. And also there's no one right, correct answer. There's no easy way. The first episode of the Dota Clinic was great because goal creation is simple and easy. Here's the best way to make goals. One, two, three, make your goals, go get them. Easy, simple. But motivation is not as simple. It's a lot more of kind of understanding it, figuring out how to apply it. If you don't apply it the right way, it might not help. All that kind of stuff is all mixed up in there. So today we're going to start with another good quote because I like that. So we're going to continue this quote trend. Um, so this one comes from Dwight D. Eisenhower, the, uh, I don't know what number president of the United States. I should know that I went through, went through all that schooling. Uh, he said, motivation is the art of getting people to do what you want them to do because they want to do it. I like this quote because I feel like it sums up motivation really well. You want to be motivated to do something. If it's get a new job, get an A on a test, get better at Dota, whatever it may be, you want to be motivated to do it, but you also want to do it while you're doing Like You want to change. You want to do the process. So a good example I always go back to for this is everybody wants to lose weight and go to the gym and get healthier, right? But no one wants to eat healthy. No one wants to go work out every day because that part sucks. No one wants to eat the salad that doesn't have taste or no one wants to wake up at 6 a.m. to go work out every day. That is the part where motivation comes in. You need to motivate yourself to power through that grind, that area that may not be fun or enjoyable, but you need to power through and find a way to motivate yourself so you can reach your desired outcome. And that's where motivation is interesting and fascinating for me is because every single human being wants to change. Don't ever let anyone tell you otherwise. Everybody's trying to get better. Everybody's trying to grow. It's just human potential and human desires is you always are moving forward and progressing. But at the same time, there's a lot of people who resist that change, people who don't embrace that change, people who don't know how to stay motivated to achieve the change they want so badly and they hope they want. So we're going to look at this kind of stuff today. Like I said, this topic is complex. It's huge. It's massive. I'm going to try to break it down into two theories that I feel that are basic enough that you can kind of understand them and you can kind of tweak them and add them to your life and for Dota. Um, and we'll talk about those when I get there. So today, like I said, understanding motivation, you want to understand that it's okay to get demotivated. It's okay to have a hard time with that change. It's okay to do that. That, that is normal. You're not the only one. Everybody has that. What you need to do is you need to figure out how to get past those road roadblocks. Um, I saw somewhere someone described it as kind of the grind. A lot of times people know how to get what they want to do, but they don't want to put in the hard work and the effort because it's strenuous. It's hard. So you need to figure out ways to get yourself motivated. And the first one, I think personally, is to understand it. If you understand how to motivate yourself or kind of what your roadblocks are, you can kind of get around them. Um, so I put just two little good examples here. You want to raise at work, but you show up late to work every day. You might like to sleep, so you know, you're know you sleeping in, you're showing up late, but at the same time, if someone goes, hey, you want to get a raise, you're going to go, hell yeah, I want to raise, but you need to motivate yourself to show up on time every day so you can get that raise. Same thing if you want to get an A on a test. You really want to get an A, you really want to get a 4.0, but man, studying is hard. I don't want to do it. You're not going to get the A. You're losing motivation. Even though you want the outcome, you're not maintaining motivation to get you there. And you might think, why don't I maintain my motivation? I want this really, really bad. Well, there's a number of reasons. I kind of wrote down just the quick, 
easy one that I think is relevant enough to Dota. It is, you may think things are too difficult, they're too far away, they're unachievable. So for Dota, like our example last time was 4,500 MMR, that's what you're reaching for. Say you're only at 2,500. You may look at that, you might play for a week. Maybe you watched last week's episode of the Dota Clinic, you were just pumped. You made your goals, you were ready to roll, got everything organized, all set up. But then you played a whole bunch of Dota that week, you lost half, you won half, you were in the exact same spot. You might look at this and go, you know what, that was a lot of work, I watched that silly video, I made my silly goals, and I'm not going anywhere. This sucks, I'm just going to go back to pubbing with my friends and picking Ricky every game. You lost your motivation because it was too difficult, because it was too far off. Another one is good is uh, something like school. Everybody goes through school, right? Everybody wants to get a 4.0. No one, no one enrolls into a school, and especially here in the U.S., the university. All right, you, you sign up, first day of school, you're all gun ho You just committed to drop $60,000 of, you know, your parents' money, I guess, your loan money, whatever it may be, sixty grand, right, for four years of college. You don't go into that and go, you know what, I want to get a 2.0 because C's get degrees, and I want to do that. No, people don't want to do that. Sometimes people do that. Because there's way more fun things than studying and going to class every day that take your attention. They shift your motivation. You're no longer motivated to get a 4.0. You're motivated to maybe get a 3.0 and have a whole lot of fun. That's totally fine. That's human nature. But you also need to understand kind of where that's coming from and just be aware of it and you can adjust to it. And so you don't think that, oh, well, it's the school's fault I did bad or somebody else's fault that, you know, I guess the good one for Dota is it's the, my teammate's fault that we lost this game, things like that, that will crush your motivation. You want to try to maintain motivation and continue pushing forward. So today we're going to look at the attribution theory. This theory is, it's pretty easy. I like it. It's one of my favorite motivation theories because it's very simple and it's a, it kind of is a, gets you in that box format to where it can kind of, you know, you can stick what you need to stick in the right box and you can kind of figure it out. So Speaking of box formats, here we go. Here's a nice little graph. So this is the attribution theory of motivation. This is going to be how you attribute your successes and your failures. This is, I win a game of Dota, what made me win? If you lose a game of Dota, that'd be your failure. What made you lose? Same thing, if you look across your life, you get an A on a test, what do you attribute that success to? If you get an F on a test, what do you attribute that failure to? Um, this box right now I have is just for the successes. This is going to be attribution theories for success of, you know, whatever it may be. This example is going to be a Dota game. So the three categories you're going to be looking at is going to be the locus of control, stability, and controllability. Locus of control is, was it controlled internally by myself or externally by somebody else or things that are outside of my control? The next one is going to be stability. Stability is it maintains that level of success or failure over a relatively long period of time. Unstable is it happens every once in a while. Controllability is it's under your control. You can kind of you know keep it there, keep it keep it stable. And uncontrollable is it's out of your control. So right now I kind of typed in some uh, some examples for these. This is if you win a game of Dota. If your locus of control is internal, you're going to say wow. I'm really skilled at Dota. Okay? Simple and easy. If you win a game of Dota and you're focusing on an external locus of control, you're going to say, wow, the other team wasn't very good. Good thing we won this time. Now, you can see these two things. You won the game, but how you attribute your success is going to affect your motivation going forward. If you think, I'm a good Dota player and I'm going to maintain my good skill over the next month, you're going to be motivated to continue playing and continue getting better. If you think, wow, we just got lucky that one time, you're not going to be as likely to continue pushing forward through that grind because you're always expecting the the luck to end out. The, the luck to end, I guess, is the right way to say it. So, stability. Stable. I've been playing good Dota this month. Unstable. I got lucky this one game. And then also looking at controllable. Controllable is I'm a very competent Dota player, uncontrollable, I got lucky this game. We're sticking with lucky two times in a row. Um, but you can kind of see the trend of internal, stable, and controllable are all things that are on yourself. They're things that you can fix, you can maintain, and you can persevere and move forward. External, unstable, and uncontrollable are things that are outside of your control. They're things that you cannot fix yourself, 
are things that you cannot count on every game. And based on your mindset of when you win a game, if you're in either of these two camps, that's going to affect you going forward. And the same thing can happen if you want to make this chart for losing Dota. So say you, you, know, you lose a game of Dota. Your initial control is, I'm a really good Dota player, but we just lost that time. External was, man, my teammates suck. Stability, we lost this game. Why I lost that one, but I'm going to get them next time. I'm going to come back strong. Unstable would be, well, we lost this one. I'm probably going to lose you know, more. It's not a big deal. We, we lose all the time. Um, controllable is, uh, I played well even though we lost. Uncontrollable would be, wow, the other team was so good, and we're never going to beat them. That's out of your control. Um, so I just powered through that. I should have typed in their graph, but I didn't. My apologies. Um, but you can do it yourself. This is an easy little exercise to kind of go through your mindset. You're not going to be able to do this right now, but if you want, you know, if you want to go the extra mile and be an A student, you can make a little graph like this. So you can play a game of Dota. Win or loss, you can kind of write down what you're feeling, and you can kind of understand what is motivating you to hit find match for that next game, or what is motivating you to rage quit and just turn your computer off and leave. Whatever it may be. You're motivated to do something, and if you understand what is motivating you, you can adjust it to what your goals are. So if your goals are just to be a mediocre Dota player, you probably don't need to worry about motivation because you're going to win some, you're going to lose some, you don't really care. If your goals are to be really good, then you're going to want to understand what makes you motivated and what keeps you going. Um, so if you find yourself in the internal, stable, controllable, good, perfect, two thumbs up for you. Maintain that area focusing on yourself, focusing on things that are stable over time, that are not just one-offs. If you find yourself being external, unstable, or uncontrollable, that is okay. That is totally fine. That means this video is going to help you even more because you can kind of slowly fix that mindset and you can kind of adjust your motivation. If you're always playing Dota and expecting to win, you're going to keep queuing up and you're going to keep playing. If you're playing Dota, in the back of your mind you're going, man, I've gotten lucky these last three games, but I'm never going to get lucky the fourth time. I've just never gotten lucky four times in a row, so I'm probably going to lose this one. Then you're going to go into that game, you're probably going to lose, and then when you lose, you're going to come out and you're not going to feel very motivated to play again. You're going to go, you know what, I lost and we're just going to lose again. Um, the other team was too good and I, you know, my teammates suck. You're not going to be motivated to continue playing, so you need to adjust that mindset of focusing on things that are within yourself that are stable and are controllable. The next theory of motivation that I look at um, today is, uh, you know, the last one as well, we're only going to hit two, is going to be intrinsic, intrinsic motivation versus extrinsic motivation. Um, those are just fancy words for inside and outside. Inside being inside yourself, outside being outside of your control, outside of your body, um, other factors, third party factors. Uh, and this theory is not as complex as attribution theory. Attribution theory I like because you can attribute that, that stuff everywhere. If you get an A on a test, you can either look at yourself and say, I studied really hard. Or you can look outside of yourself and go, you know what, the teacher gave a really easy test this time. Both those things are totally valid thought processes that people have, but you're not aware of that, that those two things lead you down two very different paths. If you're believing, I studied really hard, I'm gonna do good on this test, you're gonna continue doing good on tests. If you go, you know what, the teacher gave me an easy one this time, you're not going to go into the next one or the next one and go, you know what, she's going to give three easy ones in a row, four easy ones in a row, whatever it may be. That mindset is going to burn you out. It's going to cause you a lot of anxiety. It's going to cause you a lot of issues and problems and things in your mindset that are just not going to get you feeling good and positive and progressing forward. Um, then you can look at things like stability and unstability. Uh, you know, you don't want to always be in flux and wondering where you stand. You want things to stay the same, at least like the parameters of, you know, when you're playing and things like that. So attribution theory is more complex. There's more to it. You can attribute the success or failure in a number of ways. Um, looking at this theory of intrinsic versus intrinsic motivation is a lot simpler and it might be more relevant to most people. So intrinsic motivation inside yourself is very simple. You play Dota for yourself. You play to get better. You want to reach a point where you become a master. I put in quotes because no one ever masters Dota. That is just that's a myth. Um, but you kind of get the idea that intrinsic motivation is you're trying to make yourself a better person, whatever that may be. So you can apply the same thinking to life. So say, well, you school again. I'm using school a lot today. So school is you go to school to learn because you want to become a smarter person. You feel that if you're a smarter person, you become more valuable to society. Gives you a a better sense of place and you work harder and you feel better about yourself. 
simple, easy, you're motivated to do something because it's inside your body. You're more likely to do this if you're motivated from within yourself on the intrinsic side than you are extrinsic. Extrinsic motivation, outside your body motivation, that kind of thing can easily end sooner or later. You might, you know, you might be doing something for reward. You might not get the reward every time, so you're kind of kind of lo lose that motivation. Uh, intrinsic, you're always going to be playing for yourself. That is something you can guarantee. You're going to feel good. You're going to progress and move forward. Um, well, let's talk about intrinsic before I kind of move on from this. So that you play Dota to get a win, you play to impress your friends with your MMR number, or you play to get the fancy item drops. All right. Now, all three of these things that I put on this list here are totally valid and totally fine. You can play Dota to get wins. Great. Everybody wants to win. Nobody wants to lose. You play to impress your friends. That's kind of silly, but you know what? Sometimes it gets competitive and everybody wants to try to one-up each other. Totally fine. Item drops. Items are great. The artists are doing a fantastic job. But all three of these things are things that are outside of your control. You cannot control if you get the right item that you want. You cannot control if you get a win. You can you know, do your best and put your best foot forward, but you have four other teammates and you have five opponents. So there's a lot more variables in play that you're not necessarily going to guarantee that you're going to get that win. Or if you're playing Dota to get better, well, you can guarantee you can get better. Your team can lose horribly, but you can feel, you know what, I got a little bit better. I had a little bit of a better understanding with this hero. I feel good about myself. I'm going to play again because I'm feeling good. If you're playing to win, you're going to play a game, you might win, you play another one, you lose, you're going to be like, ah, this sucks, and you're going to quit and give up. If you're playing to get the MMR number, same thing. You lose a couple in a row, ah, give up. Well, that reward is never going to be 100% of the time. It's hit or miss. Now, some personality types can power through and persevere, and they can build on this grind of, you know, I might not get the MMR now, but I'm going to get there. Some people can do that. Most people cannot. So if you're a person that cannot do that, you need to try to adjust your mindset of focusing on yourself and within your body and kind of things that are under your control. And I guess that's kind of the, the whole overarching summary of what motivation is and why I find it so fascinating is it's something that it affects everybody. Everybody wants to change. It's human nature to change and get better. Okay, we've established that. But then on that journey and that process, it's hard. It's difficult. It's stressful. A lot of times people give up they relapse, whatever it may be, if you kind of focus your mindset on these areas, it sounds silly, but if you focus yourself on these mindset or on these specific areas, you're going to maintain that motivation moving forward. Now, it's simple, really easy mind tweaks, and you know what, if it was, if there was a perfect solution of here is how to do it, you know, hi, my name's Finch, I figured out how to make people motivated, I wouldn't be here, I'd be a millionaire somewhere. All right, and I'd be having infomercials on TV or something like that because that's the billion dollar question. No one knows how to do it or else every person would be millionaires and any, every person would be fit. Every person would be good looking. Whatever it may be, everybody's trying to get better and get to a certain point, but you need to figure out what works for you and for yourself. So for me personally, I know that if I get wrapped up in MMR numbers and kind of competing with people, I know that that is not good for me because I will put too much emphasis on winning because I want that number to go up. I get too worked up about that. And so I wanted to change my motivation to focus more on playing heroes better, making smarter item choices, things like that, things that are within my control, because then it's gonna make me more likely to continue playing and continue moving forward. Now we can take this outside of Dota and look at life. If you go to work every day to just collect your paycheck, paychecks are nice, they're rewards, everybody likes paychecks, I love getting paid, it's awesome, but if you just go to work to go through the motions for eight hours to get a paycheck, you're going to lose motivation. I think a lot of people can attest to that. It's tiring. It's hard. It's not fun. No one likes it. But you get a paycheck every two weeks. Well, you know what? You still don't enjoy that journey. Now, if you're an intrinsic motivation person and you go to work every day because you feel like you're making a difference, you're putting effort into whatever you're doing, you're changing something, you're you know bettering the world, you're bettering yourself, whatever it may be, you also get a paycheck. Paycheck's really cool. But you're feeling good about yourself and that's under your control. You're moving forward. Now this is sound this is, is a lot more difficult than I'm making it sound, but you can kind of get the idea of if you're intrinsic motivation, you're gonna want to keep going to that job every day, doing a good job, and then you also get the paycheck. If you're intrinsic and 
extrinsic motivation, it's a hard word to say. Um, you're just going to that job, get through the motions to get that paycheck. Same thing for Dota. If you're intrinsic, you're going to get better and you're going to try to work hard and make yourself better, and you're probably going to go to higher MMR in the process. If you're focused only on the MMR, you might not make it there, you might lose interest, you might find it too difficult, whatever it may be. Um, and so the last little thing, I wrote some things down here like I was just talking about of kind of how you change your mindset. Um, goals are very important, like I talked about in episode one, and how you can kind of use those to your benefit. So writing down your goals, making small achievable steps so you don't lose motivation. You're always feeling good. You're always moving forward on that progress and that step, and you're moving slowly but surely. And you feel good. You get that feedback, that kind of stuff. Another thing is have fun, embrace the change, and reward yourself. Um, now this goal, this list here isn't isn't an official fancy list. This is just thoughts that I put down that you know kind of help me. And a lot of times I work with other people on changing things in their life. These are things that I kind of help them do, and you know when they're progressing forward. So have fun, embrace the change. Is like I said, everybody's changing. All humans are trying to grow. They're all trying to get better, and progress, and move forward. But rather than trying to fight that change and trying to kind of get lazy and not want to do it embrace it try to find some fun in it try to figure out your niche whatever it may be so something to say with dota it's easy to go i want to get better but i'm only going to play these three heroes well you know what you embrace the fact that you're going to probably need to change a bit and think outside that box and play more than three heroes so embrace the change that you're going to be trying new heroes understand that you might dip in skill level during that time because you're going to lose them lose a bit while you kind of learn those heroes, but then embrace the fact that you're going to have a bigger hero pool and you're going to progress forward and feel good about yourself, that you have a wider range. Same thing with reward yourself. You need to, you know, do things that you enjoy. If you don't enjoy playing Dota, don't play Dota. If you don't enjoy going to work every day, find a new job, whatever it may be. You need to enjoy what you do, but you also need to reward yourself. And you can figure out what that is. There's tons and tons of things. I know it sounds silly, but there's some people who, you know, do good with all right, whenever I do, if I go to the gym three days a week, I'm going to reward myself by going to buy a smoothie because I really like smoothies. Great. That's a reward. If you don't go three times a week to the gym, you don't get a smoothie. Maybe next week you'll do three times you'll get that smoothie. That's a simple reward. It's cheap. It's easy, but it still is something, and it gives you that kind of sense of coming back. And All right, cool. If I keep doing this, I get that reward. Uh, with Dota, it's nice because the reward's kind of built in. The reward's going to be those items. It's going to be getting better. Um, it's going to be getting that MMR up. It's things like that. Winning winning is very, very motivational. People love to win. People hate to lose. You can see that. Um, but you can't guarantee that you're going to reward yourself with a win every time. That's outside of that fact. So if you can do something where like, hey, if I, you know, if I have a positive kill-death ratio, I'm going to you know, go get my favorite smoothie. Great. That's very silly, but also you're going to feel good about yourself that you did it. And just figure out what it is for you. It's very silly. So you know, it could be anything. Sometimes people reward it with just like a box of M and M's. And if they win a game and they feel like they played well, they reward themselves with an M and M. If they win a game and played bad, they don't get M and M's. Whatever it may be, reward yourself. Try to find something that you enjoy. Give yourself a little pat on the back. Everybody needs a little pat on the back sometimes. And that's kind of about all I got for motivation this week. I, like I said, I could talk probably for 10, 15 hours, days about this topic. I could go on and on and give you some awesome, boring lectures on why I find motivation so interesting and fascinating. But I thought these two theories with the attribution and with the uh, intrinsic and extrinsic, uh, those things are very simple. They're easy. You can apply them to what you're trying to do. And hopefully you can learn from that. And the key is it's easy to read this, listen to this. The hard part is going to be understanding your mindset and then kind of figuring out how you can change that mindset. So if you need help or have questions, just feel free to reach out to me. You can find me on Twitter, at Indy Finch. It's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-N-C-H. I'll put a link in the comments. Uh, feel free to leave a comment as well. Share the video with your friends, whatever you need to do to kind of help get other people, help you know get you brainstorming and moving on the right track. Uh, I always like helping people out. And like I said, I do this day in and day out, and I enjoy seeing people get better and get people to change. And that's partially what kind of keeps me going and, you know, what kind of came these videos, like, you know, why they're coming out is I enjoy seeing people change. I find that very motivating to myself. Like, it just keeps progressing me forward because I feel like, yeah, you know what? I did it. Go get them. And that works for me. It might not work for others. But I understand that that is something that motivates me. And so once you understand motivation, you understand what motivates yourself, 
then you can figure out what solution is going to help for you on making that change and making that progress forward and all that kind of good stuff. So once again, this was the Dota Clinic episode two. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be back next week or the week after with episode three. As far as the topics, I'm not 100% sure which one we're going to go with. Um, we still have a whole bunch in the back queue of what we can hit. If you have any suggestions, feel free to throw them out there, and you know I'll do my best to, to hit them. Uh, next week might be anxiety reduction. It might be competition and cooperation. Um, could be something completely different, and we'll figure it out. So we'll see you guys back next week for episode three of the Dota Clinic. Until then, take care, and hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Total.